It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so I'll try to be quick to get back to Andre. So why are we talking about um, tibial and pedal access, my disclosures which are not relevant? Because the demographics of the population are changing, not only in the U.S., but also worldwide. If we look at uh, the demographics, people are getting older, the fastest growing age population, those older than the age of 80. One out of four Americans now over the age of 65 have diabetes, and the number one cause of uh, renal insufficiency, diabetes. Why do I mention this? Because it causes vascular disease, specifically peripheral arterial disease, specifically uh, the worst of the worst, multi-level peripheral arterial disease, chronic total occlusions, and calcific peripheral arterial disease. With this, as you've seen already, with multiple lectures thus far, the interventionalist, the angiologist, the surgeon needs to become versed, especially when you're dealing with going from PAD to critical limb ischemia at different accesses, whether it be a retrograde contralateral, whether it be an antegrade common femoral, whether it be a transcollateral, or whether it be a retrograde access. For healing to happen, as Miguel said earlier, in terms of this perfusion, the pipes have to be open to improve this perfusion pressure, ho hopefully to uh, heal the wound. I'll ch challenge everyone in the room to always try to think outside the box. You know, we commonly see this slide in terms of arterial vasculature. You just don't look at it as the superficial femoral artery, the profunda, the popliteal, and three tibial vessels. You need to look at it as if you have a blockage in the superficial femoral, can you get through it in other directions? If you can't come from an antegrade or from a retrograde, can you come from a transcollateral? You've also got surals and uh, geniculates that, supply, that go around the popliteal that supply the, the uh, tibials from the SFA. And then once we get down to the level of the foot, okay, remember you have the anterior tibial that supplies the dorsalis. You have the posterior tibial that supplies both the medial and lateral plantars, and I'll show you a picture of that in a second. But you also got the lifeline of the lower extremity. Just like the deep femoral of the profunda above the knee, you have the perineal, which provides the anterior communicating to the anterior tibial and the posterior communicating to the posterior tibial. Remember, this is the, uh, even though this is a poor picture, the posterior tibial supplies the lateral and the medial plantars. Remember that the lateral plantar Buzz goes to the pedal loop that backfills the dorsalis pedis. And remember, the dorsalis pedis comes off the anterior tibial. So why are we doing these types of interventions? Because Galeno and Davies have shown us two things. Number one, that if we work on these multi-level patients, so if we open up the superficial femoral artery and the popliteal, those, the patency of that depends on the tibial vasculature. So if you have one or less tibials open at two years from, say, a fempop bypass, the patency is about 37%. However, if you have two or more tibials that are open, the patency increases to 71%. Not only does the patency improve by opening up these tibials, but limb salvage is improved, as you see to the uh, diagram on the right. We've talked a little bit about techniques about how to do this, but what are some of the um, the actual devices that we use. Remember, a carpenter is only as good as his tools. So in terms of wires, you know, we've talked a lot about um, 014, 018, 035 platforms. I typically use an 014 platform. When you look at all the devices that we have on our shelf, right, if you use an 014 platform, especially below the knee, you can use any one of the devices that are on your shelf. As you go from an 0 to an 018 platform, you lose about a third of those devices. And then if you go to an 035 platform, you lose about two thirds of those devices. So I would encourage each and every one of you to become versed at using 014 platforms. Remember that in terms of wire escalation, you need to become versed at using all types of wires, not just your workhorse floppy tip wires, but your chronic total occlusion wires. Remember, my typical escalation is going from an 18 gram cool tip wire to an 18 gram polymer coated jacket wire, both 014 platforms. If I can't get through, then I'll go to an 018 platform, 30 gram tip wire, and if I can't get through and I know where I am, I go to a 650 gram tip wire. Yes, a 650 gram tip wire. What wire is that? It's about Back in the estado, but you have to know where you are because it is a, a wire hanger. Now, not only that, you got to use your support catheters, flexible, stiff, low profile, and I've given you some recommendations here. As, um, as uh, Andre and some others have shown, typically we'll use a uh, pedal sheath, the cook pedal sheath. We use a 2.9 outer diameter, so you have to use wires and catheters that go through this and be versed. In terms of techniques, wrapping wire techniques, remember wires have a natural affinity for each other, so if you're coming from an integrated and retrograde approach, they want to find each other. Once they find the tree limb, you can wrap one against the other. Double balloon technique, finger of guide technique, reverse cart technique, whatever you want to call it, where you blow two balloons up and fenestrate the lumen, and then then taking out the third dimension or snaring the wire, as Andre showed very uh, eloquently. Let's talk about a couple cases. 68-year-old female, 
typical comorbidities, a right great toe ulcer. We would think from an angiosome concept that that would be the anterior tibial. As you can see here, you have significant disease at the level of the popliteal. The anterior tibial is open proximally, and you have uh, initially a TP trunk with the perineal and posterior tibial occlude. What's interesting about this patient is they had normal ABIs. Why? Because we always measure the ankle brachial indices in the normal vessel. So if you have a normal, uh, normal flow to that vessel. However, as you can see here in the right part of the slide, the anterior tibial occludes at the ankle. You have two islands of reconstitution of the dorsalis pedis. So how do you get through this? Well, you try, we tried from an integrated approach, we're unsuccessful. So we ended up taking a micropuncture needle, sticking the proximal island, was able to advance uh, two wires, used a double balloon technique uh, at the level of the dorsalis pedis anterior tibial, fenestrated the lumens, and then as you can see below, much like Andre just showed a second ago, we were able to uh, take the wire from below and floss it and then work from above. As you can see here, we still had the pedal sheath in from below. We ballooned the proximal portion of the dorsalis pedis. We then removed the uh, pedal uh, sheath, take a floppy tip wire down around the pedal loop and then balloon the pedal loop. And as you can see here, we now have complete flow around the pedal loop and reconstitution of the dorsalis pedis, ultimately healing the wound. Second case, 80-year-old male, uh, typical comorbidities, non-healing ulcer on the heel of his foot. Again, this would be the perineal or posterior tibial. Uh, arteries that we would be uh, trying to improve blood flow to. As you can see here, this was the angiogram, more or less no patent tibial vessels. The anterior tibial is occluded proximally. The TP trunk occludes, and you have a diffuse uh, array of collaterals that actually fill the perineal, and it provides the posterior communicating to the posterior tibial and the anterior communicating to the anterior tibial. So the objective was to improve flow to the perineal. Much like Andre just did, we accessed the perineal from below, opened up the perineal, ultimately supplying flow to the foot, as you can see here. And now just a brief video uh, to show you pedal access. We have a great case lined up for you. We're going to get posterior tibial access. We're going to discuss retrograde access, uh, especially tibial access and how to get it angiographically. Typically, if you have an ultrasonographer in your lab that is competent in actually guiding you in tibial access, I would strongly recommend it. It decreases dye and radiation. However, most of the people in the world don't have access to someone that is competent in tibial access using ultrasonography. So you need to be versed in the angiographic techniques to obtain this access. So for posterior tibial access, to access it angiographically, remember the posterior tibial artery is medial. So we want to bring the camera, since we're working on his left leg, we want to bring it in an RAO. This is set up in about a 20 degrees RAO. Remember, when we take the needle, it is going to be parallel to the beam okay, and perpendicular to the vessel. Parallel to the beam, perpendicular to the vessel. So the beams are coming down, needles parallel, vessels run in this direction, perpendicular to the vessel. It's so important. As you're watching it angiographically, so what we've done is we've taken a uh, fluoro subtracted still image of the shot and we place it up there and we're going to watch it real time as the needle uh, goes through the vessel, okay? So let's do this. And sometimes you can feel it pop and usually I have someone watching as I do it. Got it. To see when I get blood flow. So we've got good blood flow as you can see. It took a matter of maybe five seconds to access. Okay, so if you're comparing angiographic access to ultrasound access, it's just as quick. You just have to use these techniques. If you look at the hardest ones to access, Typically, the posterior tibial is the hardest. Perineal is the next, or, or next easiest, and anterior tibial is the easiest. The reason why is the anterior tibial is held in place and it's superficial. The perineal is held in place even though it's deep. You have great landmarks being it, uh, with it being behind the interosseous membrane. So you feel one pop, and then right behind that pop is the uh, perineal. But the posterior tibial, even though it sometimes is a very large vessel, it tends to move. It's not held in place. So it tends to roll off your needle. All right, so we're set up for perineal access. So let me show you how to do this. The first thing we're gonna do is take a fluorosubtracted shot so we know exactly where we're going. Um, and then we're gonna access uh, the leg. That's good. For the perineal, remember, we're gonna splay our camera, LAO since it's the left leg, so you splay the tibia and fibula. The perineal will run right in between it. Then we're gonna take a micropuncture uh, needle. We'll go through, we'll feel one pop as we're going in. 
Okay, that pipe will be the intraosseous membrane, and then the second pipe will be the perineal artery that lays right behind it. So what we've got now is we've got the perineal access in place. Did you get this, Dave? Yeah, yeah. Perineal access in place. It was pretty straightforward. It took us less than 10 seconds Thank you to very get much. It. Remember so we the can, needle we can roll parallel to, to the beam, case. perpendicular to the vessel. You'll hit the vessel, you'll hit the intraosseous membrane, which will be your first pipe, and then right behind the intraosseous membrane is the perineal. Again.